welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you guys three ways to thrift or upcycle vases and turn them into faux aged ceramic vases. And there's three different ways that I'm going to show you. All of them are super simple and affordable, which is great because this trend is so popular, but all of the antique vases and things that you will look at online are going to be super, super expensive. So we're going to be doing this on a budget and I'm excited to finally be sharing it with you guys. If you're new, I make home lifestyle and DIY content on this channel every single week, so make sure you subscribe down below. You like this video, you turn on the notifications, you leave a comment down below, you know what to do. So I believe that is everything. We are going to go ahead and jump into the video. So this is the group of vases we are going to be making over today. It's a mixture of thrifted and garage sale finds, but the first one we're going to start with is our smallest one. I got this for $4 at a garage sale and I just wasn't a big fan of the dark brown finish, but I thought it was a fun shape and we can make it look a lot more expensive with a very simple technique. So to start this piece, we are simply going to take off our sticker. I found that they actually put a second sticker on because the first one was adhered very very tightly to the vase but it's not a big deal because we are going to be sanding this down and the sandpaper takes it off like a champ so i have a coarser sandpaper and also a hundred grit sandpaper for something like this with a really thick shiny sort of glaze on it i found that the very coarse grit worked the best and you can see those scuff marks are being made that is exactly what we want if we leave the finish on there the paint is not going to adhere to the vase very well so we want to make as many scuff marks as we possibly Possibly can so that the paint has something to adhere to. Now we're going to be mixing our paint color. I decided to make an off-white, so I used a white acrylic paint and added just a little splash of a brown in there, just so that it wasn't stark white. And for me, I was going for a sort of stone base, a true stone base that was gray, so I wanted this to be our base color. And I also added a few tablespoons of baking soda just to give it a little bit of a grit. So we are going to be putting this all over the vase. I initially was going to do a different design on this Face, so I didn't go all the way down but for the design we're going to be doing later I would suggest going all the way down it really wasn't a big deal everything was sanded down so it was perfectly fine but I just wanted to point that out in case anybody was wondering and in total we're going to be doing just one coat just to make sure that we have a nice base to go off of Now that our base coat is nice and dry, it is time to move on to the next step. So we're going to be taking a few different colors. I decided to go with some really earthy sort of stone colors as I was mentioning, some white, gray, brown, and we're also going to be using a sponge for this to sort of give it that stone texture. So here I'm going to show you guys how I mixed together all the colors. I just used a little paint tray, but you can use a plate. I put a little bit of each of my colors in there and then I sort of swirled my sponge in between all three, pat it off a little bit of the excess and just sort of worked in little clouds. I would alternate which color I wanted to use. I ended up using a lot of the brown just because that's personally what I liked, but I really like this sort of dry brushed, sort of airbrushed effect. It really gives it that weathered look. And then you're just going to do this all around your vase. You can go over it as many times as you like. That's the wonderful thing. If you mess up, you can go over it. And I also use a little sponge tip to brush to get in all the little crevices just to make sure everything was blended together. And I also made some spots a lot more weathered looking with the darker colors just to make it look like it's been aged and dug out of the dirt somewhere. And I didn't get to film it in time for this video, but this is the spray that I used to seal all of my pieces and keep everything intact. So you're just gonna do a few coats of that, and that is how we turn this plain old brown vase into an aged, expensive looking stone vase. And it just looks so pretty. I loved it paired with these sort of daisy looking flowers, and I just put a little vignette together to show you how pretty it can be styled in your home. I just love the texture and I love the character that it adds and it only took a few different steps. This is definitely the easiest technique but I just love how simple and beautiful it is. Mm -hmm. 
Up next, we're going to be redoing the vase that is not ceramic. This one is glass. I got it from Goodwill for $3.99, and I just really loved the shape of it, but I wanted to add a lot more texture and maybe add a little bit of a design to sort of give it some life, give it a little bit of dimension, and add a bit of aging. So for this project, we're going to be needing some spackling. I got this from our local grocery store, and we are going to be coating the vase with this. Now, before Beforehand, we do need to prep our vase like we did with our first one. I'm going to take off the sticker and use some sandpaper to scuff everything up. Again, I found that the coarser sandpaper worked a lot better and just really scuffed it up really nice and gave the paint something to stick to. We don't want little scratches. We want to actually be able to see them as we can start to see them forming here. We want it to sort of look like it's been sandblasted. If you have a sandblaster, that is definitely ideal, but you can also do it my hand. And for this part, I'm going to be putting on some gloves. You could do it with just your bare hands, but I thought it'd make this process a lot easier. So we're going to be opening up this spackling, and I love the texture of this. It's very thin, but it's really easy to manipulate and spread all over the base. So I did a thin coat all the way around. If you wanted to do more of a detailed look, I would do a thicker coat all the way around. But for this, I just needed to put a thin layer all over it so that way we could make our design. For this part, I'm going to be using this little twine to make our design. I was inspired by this face that I saw online that is a lot more expensive than what we're making it for, but I loved how it had horizontal lines going all the way around it just to give it a little bit of dimension, a little bit of character. So I'm basically wrapping that twine all around it and going back around to redefine our line. It doesn't need to be perfect. I actually did mess up a few times, but I just sort of made it part of the design, let them overlap. And and it just looked really, really nice. Like I said, this is just a very plain vase. I thought that giving it some sort of design was key to making it look old and give it some unique character because it definitely needed it. And we now have that all over and we're going to let it dry completely before we go in with some sandpaper to sort of get all of those bumps and edges. You can sort of see all of the spackling, the little pieces sort of sticking off of the vase and we want to get rid of that and make it a little bit smooth. We're not aiming for the texture to be completely smooth. We just want to get those little clumps off the side. That way painting is a lot easier and it just looks a lot better overall. And this is what it looks like all smoothed out. It did take a little bit for me to sort of brush off all of the little granules and things from sanding it and then we are ready to paint. So I had a bit of that leftover white paint from our last base project, so I ended up adding a little bit more white paint to it just to loosen it up a bit, and that's the color we're going to be painting this vase. And I did two coats on this. We really want to make sure that we are sealing in that spackling because at first it's very sensitive. It can be really easy to flake off or anything like that. So doing two coats is really good to ensure that everything is sort of adhered to the vase. Everything is nice and cohesive, and as you can see, I didn't cover the bottom in spackling, so I did a couple coats on that as well. And for this next part, we're going to need a little bit of dirt. It sounds kind of weird. My dad thought it was crazy, but we're just going to get a little bit of dirt from my garden bed, and I'll show you how we incorporate that in just a second. And we're using a very similar technique to the first one that I showed you. going to need the same materials, a little tray, sponge, and an assortment of paints. We're going to do basically the same thing where we have about three piles of paint, and we're going to sort of put our sponge in the middle of them and put it all over the vase. And I am tapping off a little bit of the excess on a towel that's on my lap just to make it a lot less messy. And while that paint is still wet, we're going to add on a little bit of that dirt, a little bit of that soil. So you can use as much or as little as you'd like. I like to just sort of incorporate it into the paint and I like to cover some pieces. I like to leave a few pieces of the soil exposed and you can obviously go in with as many different colors as you'd like. Again, I sort of gravitated more towards a warm stone looking look and in some of the grooves I also made them a little bit darker just to give the illusion that it was aged. And 
that's how we turn this really simple glass vase into a faux ceramic aged vessel and I think it turned out really really pretty I love how tall it is and just all the different dimension the different colors all throughout it I think it looks really earthy and fun and I really like that we added those lines all around it it just gave it a little bit of interest rather than being just a plain stone vase and the dirt gives it really good texture and it just adds a really nice high-end look to any space up next I saved my favorite pot for last I just love the look of this honestly I could have not redone this and it would have been beautiful I love the shape of it I love the little handles I believe this shape is called an urn sort of pot and I just loved how vintage and cool it looked and I like just the short shape of it so the first thing we're going to be doing is sanding it down of course we're going to be starting with that little piece where part of the pot is missing and I honestly think that we could have left this I think it would have made it look a lot more aged but I did want to fill it in with a little bit of spackling after roughing it up with a little bit of sandpaper I would have liked to use something different maybe like a wood filler or something like that of course we can't fill it with actual ceramic but this actually worked really well especially for something that we're not going to be touching very often and it's not going to be something that has a lot of wear and tear once that spackling is dried completely we're going to be doing the same process that we did to all of our other bases is roughing it up with our coarse sandpaper now I had to be super super careful around the spackling I used the coarse sandpaper all over the pot except for the spackling part I did use the finer sandpaper and I just wanted to make sure that it blended in with the rest of the pot as much as possible I didn't let little imperfections bother me or anything just because I knew that we were going to be adding some character to this and you really weren't gonna be able to tell honestly I was gonna be the only one that was going to know that there was a piece that is not ceramic on this so we smoothed everything out I did do the inside a little bit because I thought I was going to paint in there but honestly it's a vase so you don't really need to do the inside you can leave it just a nice dark color and now we're mixing our paint together I used a dark brown and a slate gray to make a very warm sort of muted brown we're going to be adding again a few tablespoons of baking soda to give it a nice sort of stone texture and you you could paint this on with a paintbrush if you wanted but I decided to use a little sponge tipped little paintbrush I don't really know what to call it it looks well loved that's for sure and we're just going to be patting that all over the vase I thought this would be really nice to sort of give it some texture initially with the baking soda in there I thought that it would really give it some nice texture right off the bat so I did that all the way around I did use a paintbrush in between the handles to sort of get to those little grooves and everything. One thing I do want to mention is you want to sand this as well as possible. I did find the little areas that I couldn't get in with sandpaper the paint really didn't want to stick to so that just really goes to show that sanding is a very imperative even though it can be very time consuming it's definitely important when it comes to this process and I did two coats all the way around. If your pot is one solid color you could probably get away with just one coat but I did two just to sort of blend the lighter part of the pot with the darker just to make sure we had a really good base. And as you can see this urn already has so much texture it just looks so pretty already but we are going to add a few details with some cinnamon and some water now this part is a little bit complicated and takes a bit of patience and like all of our other vases we sealed them at the end this vase was not sealed at all at this point so when you put that water on the paint is going to want to move around it's going to soften and it's going to peel very easily so be very light-handed with the water you don't want to get it super wet like I did here at the beginning and it chipped off at the bottom you're just gonna have to fill that in with some paint and go over it again but like I said just use a little bit of water on your paintbrush at a time throw some cinnamon on there rub it in with your paintbrush or your fingers I kind of went back and forth between my fingers and my paintbrush just depending on what I was doing obviously the brush is a lot more abrasive it's a lot more aggressive towards the paint you just have to be really really 
careful. And I also found that paint on the edges was more likely to peel off. So just be really, really careful on the edges. It's sort of a time consuming process, but I really liked making darker areas and making this whole pot look super weathered. Again, like we dug it out of the dirt somewhere. It just looks really, really pretty. turn this really basic vintage urn into an aged floral pot and I love the shape of this I love how it turned out with the weathering again we did seal this off I just didn't show you guys in this video and once you do that everything is locked in and the paint is most likely not going to chip off I actually have one of these in my room and I've had no problems and it's just so pretty and it's honestly my favorite technique it's definitely the most time consuming but my favorite all right, you guys, that is going to be the end of today's video. I really hope you enjoyed it. Let me know which one was your favorite or which technique was your favorite down in the comments below. I seriously love how they all turned out. I feel like they really just elevate the space, make it look homey and also just like high end and beautiful, but we made it for like 10 bucks each. But I hope you learned something from this video and you want to try one of these techniques for yourself. I highly, highly encourage that. Give this video a thumbs up. Make sure that you subscribe down below so that you don't miss any new videos every single week on my channel. Thank you so much for spending some time with me over on my channel today. I hope you guys are having a wonderful fall season so far and I cannot wait to see you in my next video. Bye!